The holidays are getting closer and closer, and I have one final spot to fill in my winter collection. I want to make wax melts that look so delicious anybody would think they were peppermint truffles. To accomplish this, I have a secret technique that took me weeks to discover that I want to show you. Let's plan. For this final set of pyramelts, I'm going to go with a peppermint bark, chocolatey sort of fragrance profile. As you can see from this sketch, I'm going with a chocolatey brown layer for the bottom. For the top, I'm going to go with a plain white. No white sparkle mica, I promise. But here's the deal. I want to take these pyramelts to the boss level and give them a red... <laughs> well, that was the voice crack of the century, wasn't it? I want to take these pyramelts to the boss level and give them a red spiral. So... I've got to figure out how to do that. During the weeks prior to filming this video, all these ideas simmered in my head as to how I was going to accomplish this. I thought about recycling that painting technique that I used for my last pure melts, but it was a bit unreliable and had a success rate of like 50%, so a few days passed and I had a brain blast. These you see right here are called Knet Bienen Wash? I don't know. I'm so sorry. <laughs> By the German brand called Stockmar. They're a type of modeling clay made from microcrystalline paraffin and beeswax, which is a scientific way of saying finger bendable but also melt. I'm pretty sure they're the only brand that makes modeling wax, and it's very fortunate anyone makes it at all because without them I'd be very sad. Because of the crystalline structure of the wax, I'm able to play around with it as if it were real clay. I've just got to warm it up in my hands a little bit, which is basically exactly what you need to do with something like like polymer clay. The thing about this wax clay is it's slightly sticky, so that may pose a bit of a problem when I try to mold it, but that's a problem for future me to deal with, so I won't worry about it now. Okay, I'm a bit worried. Another thing about this wax is you sort of have to push and pull it around. You can't roll it the way that you would be able to with polymer clay, which is problematic because 99% of my plan involves rolling the clay into snakes. So my workaround is basically just to slowly pull the ends apart and not rip my hair out in tedium. Also, this is my first time working with this stuff, people, so you're gonna suffer with me. But I have an idea and I need to make it a reality, otherwise I'll die. So my first time attempting the wax spiral was a little stressful to see say the least. I filmed this in the morning an hour before I was about to leave for work, and making six snakes of red wax alone took a whole 40 minutes, so I was supposed to be done by this point. I warmed the wax a bit with a blow dryer so it would be more willing to cooperate with me, and no, that technique unfortunately doesn't work on people. Not only was I on a time crunch, but because the wax clay is slightly sticky, it prefers to stick to my hands rather than the mold. So I tried to use a toothpick to sort of pry it off my skin, but I could only do that so many times before I had to leave for work. You can see my first attempt looks like a first attempt. <laughs> And believe me, it doesn't get better. You can even see me lifting the mold in disbelief as I look at my two red spiral atrocities. I even attempt to give a thumbs up, not to show that I'm proud of my work or anything. Let me just fix that. Cut to 30 minutes later, and I redid my spirals and then some. I made the wax noodles a lot thicker because that seemed to help a bit with the whole stickiness shebang. Now I really gotta get moving because I gotta be out of the door in 30 minutes. Since I'm starting with the white layer, working my way down the pyramid, I need to melt a lot of wax. With some freaky voodoo magic, my cup fills itself to the brim and now it's time for the micro ave. Coming out, it's a bit chunky, so I'm just gonna stir those chunks away. I'm gonna use two fragrances today. The first is chocolate from New Directions Aromatics, and the second is peppermint, Voyager Soap and Candle. You may have met her in another video. I'll link it up in the top. On their own, the chocolate smells like how chocolate Dunkaroo icing tastes, and peppermint smells like those terrible little candies with the red spiral. Combining the two should give me a pretty robust chocolate cake scent with some lovely minty top notes. Peppermint bark, Peppermint hot chocolate, I don't know, something with chocolate and peppermint. I'm gonna blast the mold with my hair dryer to soften that wax clay so that my white wax doesn't solidify prematurely, and now it's time for the pour. I was really scared my spirals would float up to the top and all would be for naught and I would cry in a corner, but luckily they were fine, so I was fine too. What I wasn't fine with was how much I underestimated the volume of the white layer. A lot of these spirals are a little short and only spiral halfway up, but I'm not too heartbroken because it ensures that none of the spirals creep into the brown chocolate layer, which in my opinion would look even more off-putting. So I didn't spiral and I just rolled with it.
while that layer naps and solidifies, I've got to scurry and get on with my brown layer because at this point I was just contemplating coming to work 20 minutes late. This wax gets thrown into the microwave to meltify, and now I've got to add my brown colorant. Except I didn't realize I turned the autofocus off, and it took my CPU a Windows 98 amount of time to figure it out. I'm using just a tiddly bit of brown for this layer because I've learned that this brown oxide packs a punch and I don't want to overdo it. I'm accentuating the brown with a little black onyx mica which will push that chocolate color into 70% lint bar territory which is exactly what my brain decided I want. I'm gonna blend that all up with the twisty twirly, add my fragrance, and then wake up the half pure melts from their nap because the brown is ready to go. Now, does this not look like the most delicious hot chocolate you've ever seen? It has that exact creaminess that so many other hot chocolate recipes just can't replicate. I really have a knack for making things that are inedible look scrumptious. I was two pure melts in before realizing that I forgot to warm the mold, which I always try to do so the wax makes nice even layers, so I just blasted it with the blow dryer for about a minute, and then I poured my brown. It's time for these pure melts to sleep and solidify, and for me to go to work. And then, it'll be time to unmold. After sleeping, these pure melts look a little like wrinkly chocolate brownies. Something weird must have happened while they solidified. Maybe the moisture was too high out or something, I don't know. But you can see, these have just a bit of wax frosting, which is something I don't sweat over because sweating makes me sticky and uncomfortable, so I try to sweat as little as possible. I'm just gonna pop one out, and... Disappoint! The spiral effect isn't as pronounced as I would like it to be. You can see the parts where the red wax clay had lifted off the mold, so there's a lot of disjointed bits here and there. Regardless, let's see them all lined up. The lack of a spiral effect doesn't bother me too much because I could just pretend that these pure melts are displaying some weird ancient runes or something. It was also my first time using the wax clay for this sort of application, and I learned enough that if I were to attempt this particular design again, I could be more successful. It's definitely a technique I would try again in the future, half for myself and half because I bought like 15 other slabs of this stuff and I gotta use them. Spiral or not, do these not look like the most delicious peppermint truffles though? Like. Yum. One final thing, I want to see how they melt. Can we just talk about how satisfying that was, especially this part? The wax clay gets oddly chunky when it melts, perhaps because the pigments aren't entirely wax soluble, I don't know. I'm naming this group of pure melts Peppermint Cocoa Swirl because I like to lie to myself whenever possible, but the swirl is more like peppermint cocoa disappointment, <laughs> but don't worry. I'll try it again sometime. That was a pure melt journey with the soap universe. Thank you for watching. See you next time.